Welcome back to Time Out with the Sports Doctor podcast, where life, sports, and medicine intersect. We're very glad that you continue to support this podcast. You can get the information on any platform uh, where podcasts are played, as well as getting the video content on YouTube. But if you want to just get one place to find all the content, go to my website at drgarrettbsportsdoctor.com and you will find everything on that website. So without further ado, let's get into this episode. All right, welcome back to another episode of Time Out with the Sports Doctor. And as you can see, things might be a little bit different. So the the studio has changed, um, but the show remains the same. And I actually felt like I would be misleading you if I tried to make this any other way, because this is truly where we are right now. Less than a week in a new house, less than a week on a new job, but the show goes on. So I just want someone to hear that because there's many people who are sitting on a podcast, sitting on a book, sitting on something that needs to be birthed, but you're waiting for the circumstance or the situation to be ideal, but the world needs you now. And as our last guest, one of our recent guests said, Dr. Latifat Akintade, a GI doctor, she said, if you do not get it out, you will be constipated with your ideas or whatever, and there's only so much you can hold. You need to get it out so you can get on to the next thing. So that's exactly what we're doing today. Speaking of Dr. Latifat, go buy her book, Done With Broke. Also, I hope you enjoyed last week's episode with Dr. Derek Robinson. Uh, go buy his book, Improbable MD, uh, from the Bayou to the Boardroom. So here we are, almost two weeks away from this podcast uh, initial launch. So we're almost officially two years old now. And have, you know, just blessed really to see, continue to have growth, continue to have support, not only from my community, but from the medical community as a whole, from athletes, from entrepreneurs. I met so many people in this journey and have been able to connect and collaborate with many people. And I'm grateful for each and every one of you. So, you know, one thing I'd like to say is over the last week or so, thank you. One thing to have fans and followers, but it's another thing to have friends and true people that know you. Um, I had a recent post where I was talking about my new job. And it's one thing to like and comment, but it's another thing when someone who really knows you say, man, you look tired. Are you taking care of yourself? You know, how's this transition going? How are things going? And that's really appreciated. So, you know, and that's the importance of community because many times, especially as doctors, as entrepreneurs, it's difficult, but many people don't really understand or relate to what you're going through. So it's really important to build a community where you can be real and be yourself. So I encourage people to really do that. So what I want to talk to you today, we're just going to talk about, you've heard from my children um, about transition, but I just want to share a couple of things that I learned over the last several months as I transitioned from one position to another. And change is hard, transitioning is hard, but I feel like I wanted to do it a certain way because, you know, I've seen over the last decade, I've seen doctors come and go. Sometimes you see them one week and then, you know, you go to make a consult or send them a patient several months down the road and you hear the story, oh, they're gone. And you don't know why they left. You don't know how they left. You just know they disappeared. So I did not want that uh, with this transition. So having a three month transition is a long time. <laughs> It's a very long time to be still committed to your patient base, still committed to your coworkers, still committed to your previous institution, but trying to get things in order and filling out applications and, you know, meeting new people and planning and getting ready for a move. It's difficult to juggle all of those things, but I felt that it was only fair to my previous job and only fair to my my new job that I did it a certain way. So just some things that I've learned. And I'll just base it off of this. As you can see, I have my uh, my white coat in the background, but also I have this logo. I don't have my new, my regular logo that you typically see. 
Um, but I have something that one of my coworkers gave me, and we're just going to talk about uh, the three things that are on here, which are consistency, community, and growth, right? So consistency, as I mentioned, this podcast will be two years old in less than two weeks. So consistently showing up. This is episode 110 over the last two years. I can tell you more reasons right now why I shouldn't be recording than why I should be recording. Number one, supposed to be, I had a guest. Guest had to cancel at the last second. As you can see, boxes everywhere. This is what my house looks like. This is what my life looks like right now. But someone needs a message. So consistently showing up, I feel like has been one of the uh, secrets to success for this podcast. But it's not only for this podcast, it's for life. Whatever you consistently do, you're going to show improvement and you're going to draw people because they're going to see that, okay, you're serious about this. So consistency, consistency, I think it's key. If you continue to work at your craft, you're going to continue to improve. So just show up. This is one of those just do it episodes right here. Not, don't let anything stand in the way of you getting whatever you want in your life. And then community. So over the last nine years, it's hard for me to even cite I, but we built something special. Uh, we built something in, in a place where it wasn't really expected as well. And just being able to, over the last three months, sit down, you know, yes, it gets annoying at times when every patient expresses how they feel and people are, oh my goodness, why are you leaving? Why are you leaving? And you consistently get all of these questions. It's difficult. And truthfully, about halfway through the process, I was done with it. You know, I was done with answering questions. I didn't want to sit down and have to tell anybody else the reasons, but I was given advice to stay present and to really stay in the moment because, you know, I just wanted to transition, just wanted to go. We always want to just get on to the next thing. As they say, can we skip to the good part? But being able to stay present and being able to hear people express their emotions and share emotions and to be able to really understand the magnitude of an impact or the magnitude of relationships, especially in a small town and community, it's humbling, number one, but it's important. It's a part of a transition, just like there's steps to grief. I feel like there's steps to a transition. And if you skip some of the steps, you might not get everything or might not get all the lessons that God wants to teach you in that season. So I'm really appreciative of everyone I got to interact with, all the conversations, some as painful as it may be. But it's one thing to be able to leave where people want you to stay. And there's one thing to be able to leave. And when you walk out of the door, people are saying the door is open if you wanna come back. Because I know that transition sometimes is not like that. Sometimes transition looks like, okay, this is coming to an end and we will pack your box for you. And you never even get to get closure by being able to talk to some of the people that mean a lot to you. So I'm appreciative of the way that I was able to transition. I'm appreciative of each and every person that I got to talk to and see or shake hands or hug for that last time. So I'm appreciative for all of that. And then growth. Growth can be uncomfortable. Growth can be difficult, but growth is necessary. If you're going to continue on the track that you are destined to go to, I feel like there's more that my calling, there's more that I need to do. Um, and simply that feel and that pull is something that just kept me, kept coming back to me and uh, wasn't allowing me to rest. You know, I tried every way possible to not have to leave or to not take a new job because we were comfortable. But I learned during this process uh, that my comfort was not God's concern. And sometimes comfort can be the enemy of progress. Sometimes comfort can be the enemy of growth. But being uncomfortable and learning to be uncomfortable, that was one thing. Another thing, by staying present and learning to be uncomfortable, but being okay with that, 
and knowing that every time you walked in that patient's room, you had to share emotions or there were going to be tears or there were going to be, you know, criticism or whatever the emotion may be. But learning to sit in that moment and learning to be uncomfortable, I think, is a important step um, that you have to go through as you grow. So I'm excited for this new opportunity. I'm excited for the new colleagues that I'll be able to work with. Um, but I'm also excited about when I look back, I can say that I left my position in a, a better place than when I found it. You know, we were able to build a reputable sports medicine program. We were able to grow a sports performance program from a small room in the back of the gym to you know, a large facility with physical therapy and sports training going on under the same roof. I'm proud of that. I'm proud that I was able to make lifelong relationships and colleagues that I know I can depend on and can still call on if I need to. So I'm excited about the future. I'm excited about all the things um, that I don't even know about. I'm excited about that as well. So I just want to wrap this up. I want to leave you with several scriptures that really were important to me uh, during this season of change and growth and something that I've been sharing with not only my wife, but also with my children, because we're really standing on a promise. Uh, we know that God is faithful. We know that he is for us and not against us. Uh, so I'm really standing on those promises as I transition kind of into the unknown. So let's start off with Romans 8.28. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for those who love him, to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. So, and we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together um, as a plan for good for those who love God and to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for peace and well-being and not disaster to give you future. Let's do it from the NIV version. Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And then one that I learned through this process, 1 Chronicles 4 and 10. The Prayer of Jabez, which is actually a book which I would recommend uh, that you read. First Chronicles 4 and 10, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I would be free from pain. And God granted his request. So, as I mentioned, these are words that I'm standing on, words that my children, my wife believing in, because some things aren't perfect right now. A lot of things aren't perfect right now, but we believe. So I want someone to be encouraged by this. Like I said, just do it. Do it with U-Haul boxes in the background. Do it when you don't know the outcome, just do it because the world needs you right now. The world needs you in the form that you are today. The world doesn't need you when you figure it all out. Let's do it right now. So be blessed. Thank you for your support as we climb towards two years. You know, I have a challenge. So right now we're two weeks away from our two week anniversary. So let's get all to. So I'm gonna ask people to share this uh, so that we can continue to grow our social media following because that helps get the word out in short form. So right now we have about 1,900 followers on Instagram. So we want 2,000 followers by uh, the, our two-year anniversary. We're asking for 200 YouTube followers um, by our two-year anniversary. So, and 20,000 downloads. Why not? Let's just go for that as well. So thank you for your support. Thank you for continuing to share and be blessed. Thank you for continuing to support this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, then please leave a five-star review. And if you haven't done so, subscribe so you continue to get the updated episodes. Until later, peace. Hey, time out with the sports doc. Uh -huh. Keep our head right in the game. We ain't never stopping. You are now tuned in. Trust, you don't want to miss. This is where life.
life, sports, and medicine.